Hey guys, I'm going to be doing a sort of general guide for Age Mythology. Um, I'll be going Zeus, Random Land, versus just the Hard AI. And I'll be pausing to see, to like, explain things. And hopefully this will be useful to well, any Age Mythology players. So I guess I'll pause right off the back. Um, so the first thing you always want to do is train villagers. Villagers are just extremely, um, cost efficient. They cost 50 food. Well, and once you get hunting dogs, they'll hunt food at over one food per second, which basically means they'll pay themselves off in less than a minute, which, so they're basically just very valuable, um, units. Um, and you always want to be hunting. Never go to berries, or chicken, or goats, um, unless you're on Oasis, and you don't have your hunt, then you're starting line of sight. But always go to hunt, because it's the fastest gathering resource. Oh, uh, food resource. Yeah. And you also want to be sending your scout, and your first goal is to find your second hunt. So I'm just doing a bit of micro just to save some uh, save some HP on the villager and so it gets a nice placement next to the granary. And here I'm just following a build order where well, I'm going 5 food, 3 to wood, and then 2 to gold. And I'll be using a lot of hotkeys. So here I'm like rotating the camera with control scroll wheel using the fine town center. I hotkeyed my scout at the start of the game. And yeah, just just so it makes it a lot easier to play. But here I found my second hunt which I'll go to once I'm finished here. And then I've also found my two town centers on my side of the map. I've also found two of my gold mines. I also know that there's another hunt here. So I have basically all the information I need on my side of the map. So now I'm just scouting for goats in the middle. And then we need to make sure this villager doesn't die. Start sending villagers over here. But since I've finished scouting all my side, that that's important. Then I just need to go and scout the enemy side. So, what's useful here is I know where his gold mine is, his starting gold mine. That way, it'll tell you if you should rush, or sometimes it'll tell you if they're gonna rush. Okay, you know, follow the builder, right? So generally, once you have some villagers on your starting hunt, you want to start sending villagers to your second hunt, rather than... Um... Oh, you want, like, you want to start sending them to the second hunt, that way you won't have to, like, you won't run out of hunt in your starting base, and then have to move out to the second hunt with your initial villagers which saves walking time and later these villagers will be used to um they'll be switched to wood so you want to have them close to your base what i can do is actually use one goat since i don't want to kill an auroch since i'm soon going to be aging up Make sure you keep scouting. 
Sure, I know his berries. I know where all of his hunt is. So it's all useful information. Now we'll age up. Go Hermes. Sure. Let's not lose our skill. But I know where his wood lines are. It's, it's good to like have everything scouted so you know that their weakest location is. So right now that'd probably be their second hunt here, just in general attacking this side. Now, something special with Greek is that they can apply a lot of pressure with just their heroes and empathy in it. So I'll get both heroes, and the Mythia comes out, and then I'll be pressuring their hunt with those. And with these gold villagers, I can start sending them to a town center, and build that. So this is just a standard 2DC build, with two heroes out. And the heroes can either be used to defend your t second town center or pressure their hunt. Okay, you can see they're hunting here, which I know because I had the info. Also, one thing that's important maybe you guys don't know, but... So let me focus on this micro. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, the maps are mirrored, so that means like they're not completely mirrored, but like if you have two large gold mines, that means that they have two large gold mines. If you have two hunt patches, that means they have two hunt patches. That's very important to know. And then you also, well, this build, do you want to get a stable? Okay, they're like, I don't know what they're doing. Prostagma. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate, but so make sure you're spending your resources and not getting housed well not getting housed is sort of part of spending your resources but here I built military buildings. Since I just know the build order, I know how much I can afford. Um, yeah. But so build orders are very important. Just like even I'm like 2.2k rated, but I still need to follow build orders. You like for especially for gods that I'm not very comfortable with. So yeah, you should definitely look at one. So, Boy on YouTube has a lot of very good builders, so I'd watch those.
So I'd probably be raiding around with these just because um well they're the hard AI I know I can get away with it. And you wanna try and get as much value from your military units as you can. Something that's very important is not taking big fights that you can't win. Um like so if the enemy has a larger army than you you should basically never fight because um like if they have a larger army they're gonna get way more value out of the fight than you would like it's not just like a one-to-one -one trade like they have 15 units you have 10 units you kill a ton of their units it's more like they have 15 units then they kill all of yours and they still have like 10 of them left um, a small tip is that units with 5.5 speed or like above 5 speed I think can usually dodge arrows so, yeah that's very useful Oh, don't get housed. That was one of my tips. But you see, my resources are stacking up. Use them to build farms. Prosehe. I did say that you shouldn't go on your berries until like, you should go on your hunt. I mean, I sort of use the berries there just because it's a safe option. Sometimes, like, you don't want to be too risky because if I sent all my villagers here earlier in the game and his army went directly here they could have killed villagers for free and villagers as i said are very like efficient you never want to be losing them because the main like uh weakness of villagers is their train time um so especially if you're only a one town center you never want to be losing villagers um it's always better to idle them a bit or be a bit inefficient with berries than to lose them trying to be greedy. I'll start getting um I should get plow those. But I should be able to... I'll just try and get heroic. But one thing that can be very useful is to keep your military units where you need to defend. So like, don't like just randomly sit them, sit them over here. Where I, like what I was doing. Which doesn't really... Do I mean, in this case, it was defending the gold. But if you have nothing to do, usually just try and protect your villagers. Okay, go heroic. Trying to balance my economy a bit because I have way too much on gold. So relics can be good, but well, in this case they're not very good. And golden lions can be good for um, the early game, <clears throat> but this one's almost useless. Um, so relics are like there's some specific relics like the archer cost, which can be very um, useful and like well can be game changing, but usually. You don't really need to bother getting him. Here he has a big army. 
Έστω. Πρόσεχε. Μάλιστα. Μάλιστα. Έστω. Πρόσεχε. Πρόσεχε. Πράγμα. Βούλομαι. The one thing with Greek that you want to do is you want to try and get a good age time. You don't lose villagers. That was one of my tips. Oh, a Pisces is usually the best choice. Walling is usually important for um late game and for certain play styles, especially against certain gods. So walling is usually very useful against gods that like to raid, like Ra and Loki and um, Greek if they're going centaurs. Because this wall can easily save all of these villagers because they'd have to sit here, attack the wall. I'd have plenty of time to just run back to my town center. I wouldn't get this case where they can just like sort of run into my base uh, without being punished. Something I haven't been doing is keeping up building military production for what my resources can afford. Because, see, I'm at 80 villagers now. Because you can tell that I'm at the cap. It's red now. Um... So at 80 villagers, that basically means I'm gonna get a lot of uh, a lot of resources, which I want to be spending. And then, well, Greek, you wanna use your plenty, get Void of Olympus. Hmm. So I don't really want to be taking this fight because I know that once I start being able to use my resources, that means I'm going to be able to take an even better fight than I would have otherwise. I can also run back to my towers to get some additional damage in. You can also micro like pull back units because they'll usually chase, now they can... Yeah, that's a... Uh, well, a bit of micro stuff, yeah. I'm explaining so many concepts, but hopefully some of them are useful. So this is almost done. Ooh. Usually you want to keep your scout or some kind of scout on their town centers or their large gold mines just tell when they're uh, they start taking them or which one they are taking. Also, if this was a real opponent, their map would be like insanely bad because all their important stuff. Oh, also, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, it's a village. But all their stuff is like on this one location. So if I just went hard pressure with Athena or something like that, that'd be very effective um, here. Because if I gain map control here, I've basically won the game. Because he would just be gold starved after a while. Oh. 
Προσταγμα έτοιμος. Βούλωμε. Βούλωμε. Λέγε. Βούλωμε. Λέγε. Ετοίμος. Ετοίμος. Βούλωμε. Πρόσταγμα. Λέγε. Βούλωμε. Έστω. Βούλωμε. Λέγε. I guess they should send units here because I did point it out that I knew. You can see that they attack. You can see them attacking in the fog of war. Now, I'll try and avoid doing things that I'm like sorry when I'm thinking about like playing the game I'm usually thinking like how do I abuse the opponent like in some way and I know that the AI is not gonna get uh, Perseus and deal the micro on Colossi so usually I'd probably just be spamming Colossi here but, yeah, Stop making units for a bit and now I'm falling behind on pop. So usually if you're full pop and you have too many resources, I don't know why they're doing it. Then usually you want to start building towers, or well, like building forward. So here I have like too many resources, so I can trade them for gold. And then I have these guys going forward. Spam some towers. Or I mean that's only for late game, like usually if you're earlier in the game that means you want to age up or get some kind of upgrades. Prostagma <laughs> 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 So try and make sure your archers aren't attacking random buildings. Um, like generally, something that you want to keep in mind when you're like sort of thinking how to play the game is um, you want to like, or, yeah, but you usually want to keep your game plan simple and your macro simple, so you know like oh I send these resources, I these villagers to these resources at what times and like playing safe and sort of keep it simple so that you're, you aren't trying to do too much um and once you sort of get like the macro down like the the big idea kind of that's what the macro is um then you can start like focusing on your micro and just sort of ma managing your army as most like efficiently as possible because basically you can usually spend almost all the game just looking at your military. You go back to it for a few seconds and then you just go back to your military. Um, that's the goal, basically. To maximize everything. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, I, this was just me sort of spewing out things that um, I think might be helpful. Uh, hopefully help someone. And uh, thanks for watching.